Good morning. Welcome to Elevenses. We didn't think we were going to make it this morning. Did we? Why not? <laughs> well, I didn't. We've had a crazy morning. Totally I bonkers had morning. Faith. You have Well, you are a better person than I, Jonathan. <laughs> More optimistic, maybe. I'm sure thousands of people wouldn't agree you're another better person. I might be more optimistic than you, yes. But um, anyway, we're here. Um, and I'm really glad if you can join us this morning. Um, uh, we are having the pleasure of Rod's company this we morning. Are. Thankfully. Very glad of that this morning. Um, so he's going to be uh, leading our study today. So you've just got us two and Anya um, hosting that. Um, yes, I hope you've had a good weekend. Uh, we've had a very busy one. Had a great weekend, um, though, haven't we? Yeah, it's been really we have. Good. Kids have been out to the cinema and yep. lots of fun things and sports clubs and church orchestras. has been busy. and Orchestras. Yep, orchestras as well. So and church was fantastic on uh, Sunday morning. If you didn't come, you are very welcome. It's 10.30. Um, we had a really lively church, didn't we, on Sunday morning? It was really we good. Did. It was really good. We did, and busy Sunday school as well. Yeah, yeah. really, really, really good. So um, we're going to pray first of all, uh, and then um, we'll let uh, Rod speak, and hopefully God speak through Rod. That's the aim. Would you like to pray for Carol, because she's having something done today, and then from some of the other people? Well, thank you that you're here with us, and... Uh... When two or three are gathered, you're there among them, and uh, I'm sure that counts when it's over the the internet as well, mm. Lord. And um, I just pray you'd be especially close to Carol this morning, mm. um, and you keep her calm and um, give her your peace. Mm. Continue to pray for Stuart's healing as well. And Father, we just uh, ask again that you'd be uh, close to Betty, um, and also to Joyce as she takes care of her, Lord, as well. And um, for Ida and Marjorie as well, Lord, and um, we just pray that uh, you would be with each of them in their need and uh, where they are. We just pray uh, for people that are going about their week this week, and uh, Mondays can be tricky times and uh, it can feel a little bit overwhelming and a bit exhausting. Just pray you would give uh, everyone listening energy to do the task they have to do, no matter how big or small and um, remind them that you're there, even in the small things. In your name, Amen. Amen. Um, great, we'll yeah, hand over to Rod, who's right, looking at right. Psalm 32 today. So, Psalm 32. Well, thank you, Hannah and Jonathan. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me back. We're used to watching police series where they interview the suspect, to try to get them to confess to the crime. Earlier this year at the Old Bailey, we heard how the police wanted to force a journalist to reveal the source who made a full confession to murder over the Birmingham pub bombings of 1974. Former MP Chris Mullin helped expose the innocence of the so-called Birmingham Six, the men freed from prison in 1991, when their convictions over the deaths of 21 people were quashed. The West Midlands Force maintains information in Chris Mullins' notes could solve the case, which remains open, and they say the benefit of a confession about the bombings outweighs any promise of anonymity to sources. But Mullins has said he cannot reveal the identity of an IRA man who helped prove the miscarriage of justice, citing the journalistic principle of source protection. Quite apart from the fascinating ethical dilemma about disclosing your sources, this case highlights how confession can have enormous impact, not only on our own lives, but on others we deal with. We're looking at Psalm 32 this week, traditionally one of the seven penitential psalms about dealing with sin, starting with Psalm 6, which we've read about before. But it's not a sad read. 
It's rather a testimony of joy for forgiveness for those who confess and seek God's way in their life. Let me read verses 1 to 6. Of David, a maskil, which is probably a musical term. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. <coughs> when I kept silent, my bones wasted away, through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore let all the faithful pray to you, while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. The rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. The personal chaos in David's life, caused by sin, is likened to a flood, a threat to the order of things, a flood that needs subduing by the Creator God. But the psalm begins on a positive note. Blessed can be translated as happy, as in the Beatitudes of Jesus and with beautiful repetition to push home the point. Happy are they who have been forgiven. Happy are those free of deceit. And there's the threefold parallels. Transgressions are forgiven. Sins are covered. Iniquities are not counted against them. The flood does not prevail but only because David has broken his silence over unacknowledged wrongdoing, a common stubbornness we all have, which he describes as a burden and a groaning, in which disobedience leads to tension and tension leads to malaise. In sharing his personal experience, David doesn't explicitly identify the sin involved, nor the suffering it causes, which only helps us to identify our own situation with his. Like a plant wilting in the heat, there is an opportunity, if watered, for restoration. But the day of grace may be followed by the day of danger. Our opportunity is limited. We must act quickly. The grace of God announced here was taken up by the New Testament's new understanding of what Jesus has done for us. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. David says the same thing when he speaks of the blessedness of the one to whom God credits righteousness apart from works. And here they quote our psalm verses 1 to 2. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord will never count against them. When we sin, we don't so much break God's rules as break God's heart. But we believe there is no sin that cannot be forgiven if we take the right steps. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So firstly, confess the sin, name it before God. Then repent of the sin saying sorry not just for the act itself, 
but for the attitude that allowed the act to happen. Then ask for and receive forgiveness. Not just silently, perhaps, but like David declaring it out loud. And then rededicate yourself to God and to his service. If necessary, seek restitution with anyone else hurt by your sin. Ask their forgiveness. Seek to put things right. We may never know who confessed to the Permian pub bombing atrocity. And for that reason, we will never have opportunity to forgive him. But let's listen to our own feelings of heaviness of heart and consider whether underlying it is unacknowledged sin that needs dealing with. Well, thanks for listening. Have a great week. I'll hand you back now to Jonathan and Hannah. <clears throat> that was close. That was nearly <laughs> a, a messy transition. Yeah, you smoothed it over quickly before it could become that way. Mm. And by the way, you don't have to vote for my songs. Um, uh, so, you know, there's just two songs there because there's just two songs there. When Jesus Came is completely original, both in the lyrics and the music. To God the Father, I have adapted some words and I've adapted a tune. Um, Boldy I approach, hopefully you know, and death was arrested. You've still got to vote, guys. We can't see your name, so it doesn't matter what you vote for. I'm not going to think, Ingrid, yeah. you didn't vote for it's my an music. It's anonymous vote. Well, even if you don't, that's school. absolutely fine. I've got no problem about that. Very democratic. Very yeah. democratic. Right. I mean, it's to do with, uh, potentially as well, just to do with sin, isn't it? I mean, when Jesus came, the reason I've chosen that is because it's about Jesus dealing with our sin. Um, you know, he died for us. Um, <laughs> We've now got an even split. Excellent. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Um, uh, so we've now got, mm, we can't play three really, I have to say. It's probably a bit too much. We never know. Uh, so we've got Boldy Eye Approach. Um, I might have chosen that one. Uh, to, <laughs> to God the Father and when Jesus came. Right, okay. So um, Boldy Eye Approach is a gorgeous one as well, isn't it, really? I think we need to do Good to God the Father as well. Really? Okay. Yeah. Right, so you're going for that one. Hold on, I haven't chosen any. What am I talking about? Yes, you did. Hannah! <laughs> Hannah's now chosen one. Yes, it's still on there. Uh, anyway, um, so we'll, we'll start with To God the Father, and then I'll leave the other three up. So I'll reactivate the poll. So if you've chosen one already, like when Jesus came, if you want to stick with that one or Bold Day Approach, fine. If you want to choose another one if you've chosen to God the Father then please do and we'll play a second one after that so I hope that makes sense so I'll play to God the Father close down the poll restart it so you can choose again with another one so the only way to do these weird polls you can't choose twice it has to be once no, it's very... they're expecting an audience of thousands you see which of course we are too you know why aren't there thousands of people <laughs> Uh, coming to join us in uh, looking at the Psalms on a Monday morning. Absolutely, mm. that's that's absolutely it. But interestingly, there's always around thirty-five to fifty people by the end of the week. There is that's, yeah. that's watched this, so yeah. it's still useful for us who are here now. Thank you for joining us live as well. We so appreciate it. There's nothing worse than talking to yourself. That's a bit weird as well, really. <laughs> you don't really want to be talking to yourself. No, especially not when Facebook is uh, no. looking at it as well. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really do appreciate it. And we appreciate it when you join us later. So don't um, yeah, feel like that we don't as well. It's just you can't vote. You can't vote, can you? That's the problem with joining us later. Anyway, we can try, but it won't, it won't do anything. It won't work. No. no. So... I'll stop talking. To God the Father. Thank you, Rod. That was really good. Really appreciated that. Very controversial about the Birmingham pub bombings, isn't it? You know, I was in a pub in London once, one, yeah. one weekend when I was a student. Uh, the next weekend, the pub was bombed. Yeah, my, it was the regular place that my dad used to go to. And yeah. that day, it was he would go there every day. And that was the day he didn't go for whatever reason. So there you go. I remember my Very sister good. was uh, working near Liverpool Street and a bomb went off there and I was visiting her and it shattered all the glass. There was just glass everywhere for for several blocks. 
it's really we're going off to the piece slightly, but it's really interesting, isn't it? How how things have changed slightly with regards to stuff like that. Because when we were growing up, that was something that was quite commonplace, like having to yeah. deal with. You know, I can remember being stuck on buses for hours because of um, bomb scares and, and actual things going off. And uh, it's very different, isn't it? Uh, different, different well, things. Well, thank God, ages. really. Thank it's, God, uh, it was it yeah. was awful when you had to stop on the tube for an hour. We've said this before, so mm. we'll stop boring you. I'm going to reopen the poll, and this is going to be to God the Father. But thank you for bringing that up, Rod. You always bring up interesting, contemporaneous stories, which stimulate. The brain. Yeah, we end up having long discussions about it afterwards. So. I've got to play to God the Father, otherwise the lyrics are going to disappear off the side of the screen. This is to God the Father, which is one of my pieces. As now the sun's declining rays As even tide descends In so our years are sinking down To their appointed end Lord, on the cross thine arms are stretched
This is when Jesus came. See Hannah there about two seconds ago. She was reclining, <laughs> thinking of Halcyon University days. It's your music just put me, you know, back a few. And she years. had so many admirers. Yeah. What? I was talking about uh, a bloke beginning with D. I was talking about people um, mm -hmm. meeting up with friends, actually. Yeah, I know all about what you mean by friends. Anyway, it's terrible. She's terrible, you know. She's terrible. Anyway. Uh, Jonathan's being annoying, so uh, it's time to go now. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed those two. Thank you for choosing them anyway. Um, and uh, yes, we're back on Friday. We've got the normal timetable. I'll tell you what I should do. I should try and put the, um, the week's schedule on Facebook.
again because that worked quite well. People yeah, quite no, like it's that. really helpful just to have it up there for reference. We've obviously yeah. got places to welcome tomorrow at 10.30, that's Tuesday, and Wednesday 10 o'clock uh, we've got toddlers and uh, we've got house groups this week. Didn't we have, we? You asked that on Sunday groups. when I, they weren't no, up either. I keep thinking they're there. No, I haven't automatically in my head that they're week. there. 21st, there is... This Saturday night, there's Christian Aid Quiz at... St Hilda's. Uh, I know Rod and Wayne are going. They're mm. creating a team. Yeah. Um, we're, unfortunately, we've got, we've got um, Rifka's birthday that morning. In the morning, we? I and think. And also we haven't got any babysitters. No. So, um, no. but if you are free of children, responsibilities or... Mm. You can get somebody to cover your responsibilities and your children. Then it is there. Do you go? Um, It'll be and good. Uh, possibly, Rod, what about if you put it on Facebook as a, all the details? Um, they are down the church, so we can always take a picture and stick it on Facebook as well as the details of how to sign up and what to do about that. I think it's £12 a team or something. Um, can you have a team of 30? Team of six, I think. Oh, it six. Is. Okay. Yeah. So you can't really cheat then. No. 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 Okay. So, yeah, 10 tube with a team of six, only two pounds each. Um, so, yeah, and um, that would be great fun. And then on Sunday morning, it's 10.30 again. Uh, we're looking at the next part of uh, Philippians, which is just one of my favourite passages ever, Shining Light Stars. And kids are looking at Daniel. So, there we go. Fantastic. Um, if you've got any prayer requests, let us know. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye.